this St. Patrick's Day. May I offer a rich and smooth way to make all the mother holidays green with envy. <laughs> rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Champ Week presented by Principal. High stakes tonight in the Treasure Valley, the site, Boise, Idaho, as it's the Big Sky Championship game between the Bears of Northern Colorado and the Bobcats of Montana State. Good evening, everybody, alongside the former Big Sky Coach of the Year, Joe Cravens. I'm Tony Parks, and Coach, you've been a part of teams that had huge regular season accolades, whether it comes to MVPs, Players of the Year, a Coach of the Year as well. And we're gonna look at a number of players tonight who have those accolades, but you know, especially in a one-bid league, it all comes down to these days in this conference tournament, and the chance to experience the ultimate dream for these teams is right here tonight, and it's right in front of them. Well, Tony, the one and three seeds, they split their regular season series, each team winning by two points. They've had to scrap and claw to get to this championship game. This has all the earmarking of just a dandy of a matchup for this championship. All right, you've talked about it. The stars have to shine brightest on this stage, and that was the case last night. Daylon Koontz with his team down by 11 in the semifinals, willed his team back with a spectacular performance. How about Daylon Koontz? 30 points in the second half to set a new career high, 36, and he was shooting them in from all over at one point. Four straight makes from the three-point line. Tony, he was just spectacular. Jabril Bello started with the Montana State Bobcats, was a little shy, was a little raw. Next thing you know, he's the MVP and the Defensive Player of the Year. Jabril Bello has had a terrific year at 6'9", 240. He is a load on that low block. He's hampered a little bit by a little bit of a, a knee injury he sustained last week, able to start able to play in small incremental minutes, but he'll be on the floor the player of the year in the Big Sky Conference. The last time Montana State made it to the NCAA tournament, Danny Sprinkle played for that team and had 30 points in the championship game. Steve Smiley has Northern Colorado move in the right direction. For the last five years, the Bears have won 20 games. They had done that just twice before that span in their program's history. The championship game for the Big Sky Conference is underway. The number one seed will start with the first possession. Look for them to show some patience here to try to set the tempo how the game's gonna be played. In their first game in the tournament, Tony, they had five guys in double figures, so they can come at you in a lot of different directions. Adamu starts it off with a bucket there. He exploded in the second half to spark the comeback for Montana State as he ended up with 15 points in the semifinal. In their first game of the tournament, he went over 1,000 career points. Empty trip, Bodie Hume put up the three. The next three that he does hit will tie him for the most three-pointers that have been hit in program history. You see the starters there at the bottom of the screen for both Montana State and Northern Colorado. Adamu just missed there. Korjan Kuch grabs the rebound. He'll probably have a number of those tonight. He'll eat up the glass. That's a, a great matchup for Bodie Hume. He can use his length and height. John Kuch from Matt Johnson. Anytime the ball is dribbled to the paint, Tony, bad things happen if you're on defense. Bello had to come over and give some help, and that opened the door for John Kuch the long, lanky center for the Northern Colorado Bears. Tony, remember, this is Montana State consecutive years in the championship game. I think you'll see them get off to maybe a little bit better start than Northern Colorado, who hasn't been here for a while. Adamu now with five points. He had 17 points and six rebounds when these two teams met up last week. Well, he had a pretty quiet first game of the tournament, a quiet first half, and then came out and had 15 in the second half last night. Johnson misfires on that jumper. And the Bears have missed a couple pretty good looks, and I think, again, their first appearance in the, in the championship game for a while, I think there may be a little early jitters on their part. Muhammad just missed, but had it right on line. Kuntz open and misses his first attempt. 
Well, he didn't miss many last night. 30 points in that second half. He, at one point, he hit four straight threes. He had six points at halftime and ended up with 36 and just put on a show in that second half. Bishop with the floater. And Montana State is out to a 7-2 lead. They struggled with starts as they got down 8 to nothing in the quarterfinals against Sacramento State. They were down 11-3 to, to Weber State. It's the opposite here today. Johnson underneath. It's blocked. A great block by Patterson. Bishop taking multiple screens here from Bello. Now bumps into Bello and hits the shot. And a foul is going to be called, and it's down, and it's before the shot. This he, might have happened away from the ball. Xavier Bishop is an unbelievable finisher around the rim, or in the lane, I should say, just like you saw at 5'8", 165 pounds, first team, all Big Sky Conference, and he can make more acrobatic shots like that than you can shake a stick at in a 40-minute game. Xavier Bishop loves to talk trash, and he prides himself on it. Says it really gets him going. Coach Sprinkle said, it would amaze you how many times I've secretly had to talk trash to him to get him going. Yesterday, he was in the mix there with Kobe McEwen. Boy, he they... said, I didn't have to do anything. But there have been games where he says, there's another level Bishop can hit. And I'll just say a few things to light a fire. I asked him what he said. He said, I can't tell you that. <laughs> well, he is competitive as heck. He's had 14 in both their games leading up to here. The little guy was runner up for Mr. Basketball in the state of Illinois as a senior. He's from Springfield, Illinois, and that is no small accomplishment. As you know, we, they play pretty good basketball. Patterson hits the jump shot. He had one made three. In the previous five games before this tournament, he was one for 12 and two of his last 16, but he's had some timely buckets here so far in this tournament. Very head up play, a heads up player for Montana State. They were reviewing earlier to see if that foul had occurred before the shot or after the shot. Here's Kuntz crossing over in the lane, some traffic and another block defensively for Montana. Well, Montana comes at you with great length across that front line, and you can see they change a lot of shots, especially if you're a guard dribbling in there. Montana had 19 games this year with four-plus blocks. They had one of them here in this conference tournament. That was yesterday against Weber State. Bodie Hume, double, throws across the river for Coates, and he hits the three. Oh, you can't get too far from him. He came out of that locker room hotter than a cheap pistol yesterday. You better, even if you're in a weak side position, you better shorten that weak side help and get to him a little quicker than that. Ends a streak of four straight misses for Northern Colorado. Bello with a high post touch here. And you see Northern Colorado not going to come uh, double bellow on that catch because. Bishop from way uh, outside. Welcome our audience to ESPNU here tonight, the Big Sky Conference Championship game. And it started with fireworks here from Xavier Bishop hitting deep threes, a 12 to five lead for Montana State. We'll step aside, 15-24 left to play here in the first half. Bobcats by seven early on. They say we Irish are a lucky folk, but this St. Patrick's Day, may I remind you that good taste doesn't come from luck. It comes from the oldest licensed whiskey distillery in the world. Rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Huddle up, sports viewers, and enjoy Arby's Corned Beef Ruby. Arby's Corned Beef. Arby's. Arby's. Come on! Arby's, we have the meat. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal, helping you plan, protect, invest, and retire. Champ week right here on ESPNU. We take a look at this flashback. These two teams played one week ago, and it looked like Montana State was up against the ropes, but Raekwon Battle, the sixth man of the year in the big sky, with a dramatic buzzer beater and a court-storming moment. 
In Postman. Well, he's gotten pretty comfortable being the hero. Not only he was the hero a week ago, he was the hero last night going 13 of 14 from the free throw line. Each one more clutch than the first one. Led his team with 17 points in their win over Weber State. Just had a feeling we might see these two teams one week later. You and I talked about that last week, and indeed, here we are. Well, that's how Montana State won last week. About two months before that, it was a two-point game over in uh, on Northern Colorado's home court that went overtime. Northern Colorado won by two. So these two teams, boy, have had a great two-game series during the regular season. Coons one for four here so far. Bishop and Adamo have 10 of the 12 points for Montana State to get things started. There goes Muhammad. Beautiful move. I call Muhammad the Draymond Green of this Montana State team. He does a little bit of everything for him, a lot of dirty work, doesn't get a lot of credit, but whoa, what a star role player he is. 14 to five, and now Muhammad swaps that ball out of there. Muhammad is a guy that played with North Texas a few years ago, transferred to Montana State. He watched a lot of his former teammates get to the NCAA tournament with the Mean Green, and then they won a game in the tournament. Since then, he so badly wants to get there as well to experience the same thing. Well, he's got a pretty good chance this year. I really like the nice rhythm that Montana State has settled into offensively here early in the game. And again, I think that has a lot to do with their experience of playing in this game last year. John Cooch, no good. Montana State defensively settling in well. Northern Colorado shooting just two of 10 from the field. Bishop is short there. And Bello, maybe because of that knee, the player of the year out of the league now, giving way to great Osselbar, the outstanding freshman who has come on in leaps and bounds from Montana State. This year. Dalton Connect, the first team junior college All-American a year ago. He was just two of seven from three during the tournament, and he hits his first attempt. He had 17 last night, and boy, in that dog fight they had with uh, Portland State. He was the only guy off their bench that scored, but those 17 were so, so timely. A corner three and an answer from Gazalis. He had a career high 19 when these two teams played a week ago. That was a fabulous performance from him, and it started to really show the depth of this Bobcat team, and they're showing it here tonight. Well, I think the Bobcats are the deepest team in the big sky, and I think Danny Sprinkle deserves a lot of credit for cultivating that. Cookshausen answers. Cookshausen not known as a driver, the best three-point shooter in the league, but you leave him a wide open lane, he can get it to the basket as he just showed. Bishop falls off the lip of the rim and a foul is gonna be called on Montana State. And the pace has really picked up here, Coach. What, I was bragging earlier about Xavier Bishop, what an acrobatic finisher he is in the paint. He had that one right at the rim and couldn't make it go down. He is a tough cover. That's a great matchup for another awful good point guard, Matt Johnson, the starting point guard for the Bears, who was a third-team all-league guy. But I tell you what, little Xavier Bishop is a handful to stay in front of. Dalton Connect lost the handle there for a moment. Got it back, takes it at battle, and battle blocks it. That is the third block for the Montana State defense here tonight, the number two team in defensive efficiency in the big sky. Raekwon Battles, you'd mentioned the co-sixth man of the year with Cameron Parker, the point guard for Montana. He is so, so explosive. He will be a superstar in this league. Connect turns a trip to the free throw line. This is now the 25th game this season that they've had three or more blocks. They're number one in block percentage in the conference. Dalton Connect, 75.5% from the stripe during the season. And Tony, as a coach, that should not happen on an end out of bounds play, defending an end out of bounds play. All you got to do is get a guy at a 45 degree angle on the ball to take away that backside. Sometimes guys get angled or get kind of suckered away from that position, but if you just stay there with active hands, you give up nothing on that backside. A, you won't see a lot of mistakes by Montana State defensively, but that was one. Steve Smiley putting a big emphasis on the state of Colorado. 
Dalton Connect, one of those guys he's happy to have on this program. He has the number two and number three in-state recruits coming to his program next year. Well, he started the first 11 games of the year, and then uh, Coach Smiley turned him into a super six man. Speaking of a super six man, two for two from the three-point line is Nick Gazalis, a kid from Jacksonville College in Texas. He's off to a terrific start. Johnson from the baseline left it short. Montana State by eight. Well, you just you could just almost feel their confidence. Osabor. What a great pass. Remember, Xavier Bishop is left-handed, and he looped that one in there with his off hand. And the big freshman that I was bragging about, 6'8", 240 pounds. Just drop step that one to the basket. Kuntz fouled as he was spinning in the lane. And they're going to give him two free throws when we come back. Take a deep breath. The Bobcats tearing it up with some big time outside shooting. Gazalis with six. And Xavier Bishop finding Osibor. Ten points. Montana, on, Montana State on top. This St. Patrick's Day. May I offer a rich and smooth way to make all the motor holidays green with envy? <laughs> rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Arby's, two for six bucks. Every day. Crispy fish with that spicy kick. Two of those things for just six bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. Champ Week wraps up tomorrow with two more championship games on ESPN and the app. The SEC title game is at 1 Eastern, noon Central. And then the final automatic tourney ticket will be punched with the winner of the Air Force Reserve American Championship game. Don't miss it tomorrow. And what a run for the Aggies of Texas A&M as they had a wire-to-wire -wire win today. The eight seed rolling back. Northern Colorado looking for a bounce back after this early start. Montana State, Tony, shooting 64%. There's uh, no, not really hard to figure out why they're up 10 points, and they are holding Northern Colorado to 30% from the field. Taking a look at that SEC bracket. Coming up tomorrow, Texas A&M and Tennessee. Big tip of the hat to the wonderful tribute this weekend for Dick Vitale as they honored him. A big celebration for him and well-deserved and it's so special what Dick Vitale has meant to college basketball over the years. A special week in college basketball anyway and it certainly was a teary-eyed moment earlier today. No question. Dalen Kuntz 10 of 11 last night from the free throw line on his way to those 36 points. Let's make that 11 out of his last 12 I talked about Montana State's great bench they've already had six guys score Tony here in the first nine minutes of this game well, the Colorado with a little soft pressure now falling back to a 2-3 zone they played a lot of 2-3 zone last night against Portland State Portland State with those water bug type guards it really helped them keep those guys out of the paint Osibor fighting for that rebound draws a foul the bench of this team played a lot of minutes in that game against Northern Colorado. They knew that they had a lot of great depth. On March 5th, Coach Sprinkle set out a number of guys. They had the regular season championship wrapped up, and he was so proud and impressed of how well they played, especially with the clutch buckets. We know about battle, but you also had Gazalis and Osibor with big moments. Well, Montana State had four regular season games in the last week of the regular season. They played every other day. They had secured the championship, the first bid. And I was kidding to, uh, Danny Sprinkle about uh, they, he was trying to rest some guys, and they won on that 40-footer. I said, you win even when you're trying to lose. But, I mean, they, are, they just had that type of year. And as I mentioned earlier, Bello playing in short increments of, of minutes because of that knee. And that is why great Osibor, the big kid from England, the big freshman, is so important in, in the way he's improved. They, they will play a little bit together. Jabril Bello, the MVP, and the Defensive Player of the Year. 
The only 1,000 plus, 500 plus, and 100 plus. I had his very first college game at Utah State three seasons ago, and he was just a big old body kid. And by the end of the year, you could tell how his body was changing. Not only did he become a better athlete, obviously that helped him become a lot better player. Connect. Goes to Jean Cooch in the high post. Now back to Dalton. Connect. A great individual defense by Gonzalez. Shot is short. Connect tries to pass inside. Loose ball is now grabbed by Northern Colorado. Cookshausen hits a three. Oh, Cookshausen you, has five. You don't want to let that kid get going. The leading three-point shooter in the league. Last year, he made 199 three-points baskets that led all Division I players while he was at McNeese State. You have got to find him. Bishop misses on this one. A stop for the Bears. They cut the lead down to seven. We're going to cut into it more here. Dalen Koontz driving hard to the paint. Here's Bodie Hume. Catch and shoot three is off. And Koontz has it in the corner. That's a nice contest by Raekwon Battle. I tell you, UNC, other than that last somewhat open look by Cookhausen, has not got anything easy. Hume, or Connect, can't hit on that drive. And the rebound comes down to Montana State. Bishop up the court to battle. Battle leaning inside with the left and gets the bounce. How about that runner with the left hand? The transfer from Washington, as I said, next couple years is going to be a superstar in this league. The Cole Six Man of the Year, and he has been a star twice in the last seven days. Offensive foul. Great defensive play by Adamu. Let's take a look at this move by Battle. The kid that was a hero from the free throw line. That'd be a pretty good horse shot there. That runner with your off hand. Boy, he does some things that just continue to amaze me. And he has come off the bench all year. A lot of guys that have trouble with that. Uh, not being a starter as good as he is. Danny Sprinkle's done a great job of molding this team. His mom used to penalize him for missing free throws. He had to do push-ups. <laughs> well, that's why he became a great free throw shooter. He's actually hit 41 of his last 44. Said he got tired of doing push-ups, so he got great at free throws. 13 of 14 last night. Each and every one of them pressure packed in that. Pillow oh. left alone. A breakdown defensively, and the lead is 11. The player of the year throwing that one down like a fat kid on a teeter-totter, and I'm not sure where core John Cooch was during that time. <laughs> and I was on the other seat. <laughs> John Cooch with the floater, gets it over Bella. John Cooch, not a great skilled player, but boy, what a nice defensive rebounder he is. He doesn't try to do too much offensively. Over 100 starts in his career. He started every game for the last three years for the Bears. Bishop pulls up from the mid-range. It swirls out. Bellow the loose ball. Bishop left open again. He's not shy. Short on this one. Oh, you don't score over 1,800 points like he's done now. That's five years. He's one of those COVID seniors. He just has a knack for making it go in. I'm surprised he's missed back-to-back -back jump shots. Jabril Bello, the MVP and the Defensive Player of the Year. Breakdown defensively, and he took it right down the alley for a two-hand jam. Montana State on top here in the first half. A practice spicy crispy chicken sandwich eater knows. Keep one hand on the sandwich and one hand on the drink. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. This St. Patrick's Day, may I offer a rich and smooth way to make all the motor holidays green with envy. <laughs> rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Our NBA Sunday Showcase doubleheader on ABC starts in Brooklyn with KD and the Nets hosting the Knicks at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Then Luka and the Mavs play the second game of their five-game road trip against Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and the Red Hot Celtics. And in our NBA Sunday night matchup on ESPN and the app, LeBron and the Lakers 
are in Phoenix to take on Devin Booker and the Western Conference leading Suns. Coverage begins at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Tony, last night Montana State had 16 turnovers in that street fight they had with Weber State Wildcats. We are 13 minutes into this game. They have yet to make a turnover. Cooks Housen short on that three. And so far in the game, Northern Colorado shooting just six of 19. You know, that was a great shot by Cookshausen, but he can take a shot that maybe doesn't look like a great shot and make it go in. He has a lightning release. Talking about Montana State's death, they now have eight guys who have scored for them. Here goes Jabril Bello with the clock winding down. Doesn't draw iron, shot clock violation. A little bit too patient then, and Danny Sprinkle looking at Xavier Bishop and saying, just take it and create something. Normally you wouldn't have to encourage him to do that. He is pretty quick to get it into the pain and to share the ball. Each team with just one turnover. Montana State, again, just seems very relaxed, especially at the offensive end, and has found a great rhythm in their half-court offense. Brody Hume still scoreless. As he misfires there, and a foul is called away from the ball. A couple big old bodies going at it down there. Jabrell Bello at 6'9", 240 pounds, big enough to go bear hunting with a switch. When he makes contact with you, it is not easy to keep your feet. Bella with his second will go sit down. So an interesting stretch here to the half. Ossobar, who's played very, very well here of late and in this tournament, they really don't miss a lot, even though the player of the year in the league goes to the bench. Ossobar, one of three Englishmen on this Montana State team. John Cooch with the hook and got it. John Cooch, not normally a real skilled player around the basket. He's had a couple pretty nice post moves here in the first half. One Six of, points for him so far in this first half. And Northern Colorado back in their 2-3 zone that they had a lot of success with last night against Portland State. Adamu is off on the three. Patterson, the offensive rebound. Asabor underneath, has it knocked away. 10 bench points for Montana State already up to this point. They prided themselves with that second unit. Here's the nice move from Court. You know, as I said, not a great skilled player. Boy, he has come on in leaps and bounds as a, a three-year starter for the Bears, but he is a high, high-level athlete. This Bishop with the clock under 10. Slices to the baseline, baseline drift, Patterson a three. And that's what Tyler Patterson can do. He understands how to read the draw kick and get to his shot. And at 6'8", he doesn't have to have a whole lot of space to get it away. His mom played at Montana State, his dad at Utah State. I imagine they're here in the stands somewhere. Kuntz with his team down 10. Fires one from 17 and is off. Montana State trying to turn some defense into offense. Adamu, who's kind of had a big night offensively last time, he's having a big night defensively matched up against Coons tonight. Adamu, 6'4", with long arms, a very, very good individual defender. Muhammad, searching for something in the paint, will throw it back out to Bishop. Clock is down to five. Let's see what he's got. A crossover. And a run down the lane, misses. Osibor goes for the offensive rebound, and the loose ball foul will be called on Northern Colorado. You gotta hit old Osibor pretty hard at 6'8", 245 to make him go down. Great one battle, the sixth man of the year now coming back for Tyler Patterson. Not only are they deep, uh, the Bobcats I'm speaking about, Tony, they have a lot of interchangeable parts and gives Danny Sprinkle a lot of flexibility as to how he substitutes. They can play big, they can play small, and he's done a great, great job. As I always say, you don't wake up as a coach 
and one day and have a deep bench. You've got to work on that all year long. Adamu in the high post hits the mid-range jumper. The lead is 12, their biggest of the game. That was a great instinctive flash against that good zone by Adamu, a kid who went over 1,000 points in their opening game here and got to the heart of that 2-3 zone. Kuntz is fouled as he skies to the rim. Watch Adamu flash to the middle of this zone here and find that seam. And that's just good basketball instincts there. And Xavier Bishop, a great passer, just getting that nice little bounce pass into it. Dalen Kuntz with five points so far in the game, just one of five from the field. I think it'd be terrific from the free throw line. 13 of 15 in this tournament coming into tonight. And now three for three at this moment. The guy that we haven't called his name forever is Bodie Hume. Bodie Hume last year in this tournament had back-to-back 30-point -back games. He is yet to score a point here tonight. The number one offense in the big sky, the Northern Colorado Bears. And they're also number one in three-point percentage. And on the opposite end, three-point percentage defense, Montana State has been unreal this year. And especially in the tournament, team shooting just 24.1% from distance. Northern Colorado in their 2-3. I, I think Northern Colorado is playing that 2-3 on dead balls and makes, and then in transition defense, they're matching up man-to-man. -man. But it, it's, it's got Montana State a little bit back on their heels. Muhammad just missed on the turnaround. Boy, Muhammad has been a great piece to this puzzle of success for Montana State. A great defender and a normal, a very dependable scorer. Adamo called for the loose ball foul here. That will take us to the next time out. That is his second, Montana State by 10. This St. Patrick's Day, may I offer a rich and smooth way to make all the motor holidays green with envy. <laughs> Rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. When you decided to order a deluxe crispy chicken sandwich instead of a regular one, what you really decided is that you deserve a little something extra today. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Two championship games tomorrow will cap off Champ Week on ESPN and the app. The eight-seeded Aggies, who have had a dream run, square up with Tennessee, the number nine team in the country, for the SEC championship game starting at 1 Eastern, noon Central. Then it's the Air Force Reserve American Championship game to decide the final automatic ticket that will be punched. The Houston Cougars showing why they're the number one seed with that dominant win today. They'll play against Memphis in what should be a great finish to Champ Week. I was talking about Abdul Mohammed being kind of an unsung hero on this team. While well, he only has two points, only one for four, and he's missed a couple right at the rim, Tony. He leads all rebounders with five. And how about Northern Colorado? 22 turnovers last night, one right now. Montana State, 16 turnovers last night. And they've got them down for none, but I thought they had the shot clock violation. So according to the official stats, only one turnover between both these teams in the first half. So much for championship jitters. John Cooch missed on the front end of the one and one. Montana State up by 10. They've been in control for most of this first half. Muhammad. Bumped and fouled. That was the last foul to give for Northern Colorado. And I talked about how valuable core John Cooch is for this Bears team. You just saw him defend that ball screen with great length and lateral quickness. 6'9", 220 pounds. And he got down there and stayed in front of Xavier Bishop. And that is no easy task. Bishop at 5'8", 165. Incredibly speedy. So shifty and changes speeds as well as anybody you'll have a chance to see play. He is. You've heard me say this, if you ever have tried to nail Jello to a tree, that's what it's like trying to stay in front of Xavier Bishop. He is all over the place. Bishop just two for nine so far. Does have four assists to go with his five points. 
Patterson has hit a couple of buckets today, but bounces this one out of bounds, and it will go to Northern Colorado. The first turnover by the official stats for Montana State, and he threw that right to Greg Nixon. I didn't know Greg Nixon uh, was much of an offensive player, the official, but uh, that's, he hit him right in the chest with it. Apparently the play was designed for that. Pretty, pretty, pretty good catch, you know. I mean, pretty good place to hit a shooter. Cookshausen coming around defenders and can't make the layup. The ball tapped out. Coots has it out to the corner and Connect throws it to nobody. And then Bishop takes off to, off with it. He road runners up the court and swirls out. What a nice decision by Bishop. He could have forced Offensive the issue foul. there. Possible. Big, great Osborne just went out and tried to set a screen and threw a cross body block there. That was not real hard to call that foul. Bishop maybe started a little quick on that. He should have held on to the ball. So. This foul before the shot, it will send Northern Colorado to the free throw line. They're still in the one and one, as that is team foul number nine. Koontz obviously is left-handed, and he prefers to go left. I believe I, if I were picking him up in that situation, I'd play him about a half a man to the left. He can go right, but then he likes to spin back to his left again. But you know, I, I, I'm, I think I could guard him sitting over here with some headsets on. Guarding him out there on the floor may be a different deal. <laughs> Koontz played two years under Tad Boyle there at Colorado and was former teammate of Bodie Hume. They played club basketball together, connected very well while playing with each other here at Northern Colorado. They very much want to get to the NCAA tournament and experience that. That's his first missed free throw of the game. He's five of six so far in the tournament. He is 18 to 21. Well, he's the conference leading scorer. He's had 20 or more points in seven of the last 10 points. He's a guy that understands putting the brown thing in the round thing. Patterson, quick trigger three. He is lighting it up today. Patterson, three of three from the field to go with eight points. As I said, at 6'8 and long arms, it doesn't take a lot of space for him to get that shot off. Bodie Hume having a tough first half, but he's fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two in the double bonus. But just great catch and shoot by Patterson. And watch Bishop put it right on the money. Patterson finding a little fade type move against that uh, against that zone. Great footwork by an awfully, awfully good young shooter from Montana State. Well, coming into this tournament, he had made just one three in the previous five games. He was one for 12. But tournament time can change things in a hurry. He, he wears down a little bit. You know, he's not real big, only a sophomore. Last year, he went through the same thing. He's bigger and stronger this year. Look for him to have a very, very good junior and senior year. Bodie Hume on the board with a couple of free throws. Still 0 of 3 from the field. And it's a 10-point Montana State lead here. It's hovered right around that double-digit mark the entire half. Bodie Hume, the former freshman of the year, about three years ago, and he has scored a bunch of points in that Bears uniform. The Zalus knocks one down. All eight Montana State players have made a field goal, and the Bobcats lead by 12. The Zalus, I think you mentioned last Saturday in that terrific game against these Bears, had a career high 19 points. He's another guy that just kind of has a knack for making shots. And speaking of Koontz going left, he's going to go left and left and left. He can go right, but boy, he sure is better going left. The Southpaw now with 10 points in this first half. Bishop gets a step on Koontz, gets inside. We'll go to the line. Back to that conversation about trying to stay in front of him. Well, Bishop has, exactly. <laughs> it, it's, uh, he, it, you know, he, you talked about it a while ago. Some guys are straight line drivers. When they put their head down, they go in a straight line. This kid can change direction about four times and speeds three times from about the free throw line on in. And he has a great feel of leading with his body. He puts his body into you and throws those acrobatic spinning shots off the backboard. 
And he's another guy that has scored an awful lot of points. A COVID senior, meaning this is his fifth year to play. This is his 153rd game, and he has scored over 1,800 points in his career. When he first got to Montana State, it was a rough start with Coach Sprinkler. And the reason why it was a rough start is because they were having a tough time getting on the same page. He said, look, he was a scorer, he was a good player, but he was not a point guard. He's been a terrific point guard since. First team all conference, and his team is up 12. We'll be back at 30. They say we Irish are a lucky folk, but this St. Patrick's Day, may I remind you, that good taste doesn't come from luck. It comes from the oldest licensed whiskey distillery in the world. Rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. A practice spicy crispy chicken sandwich eater knows. Keep one hand on the sandwich and one hand on the drink. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Welcome on back to the Big Sky Conference Championship game. There's Coach Danny Sprinkle. You know about that 96 championship. He scored 30 points in the final as the freshman of the year. And then look at that, nine of the 12 Big Sky Conference tournament wins involving him. Well, the night before he scored those 30, he eliminated my University of Idaho team from the Big Sky Tournament. So I have some uh, kind of mixed feelings about okay. Coach Sprinkle, but he was a terrific player and an, an even better coach. Takes great pride in coaching his alma mater. All right, another timeout. This one called by Montana State. We're back in 30 seconds. Bobcats still up 12. They say we Irish are a lucky folk. But this St. Patrick's Day, may I remind you, that good taste doesn't come from luck. It comes from the oldest licensed whiskey distillery in the world. Rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Finished? Of course not. You know crispy, juicy, tender rookie. You know that pouring the McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich crumbs into your mouth is the only way to say your final goodbye. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Forty seconds left here in this first half. Montana State up by 12. Trying to make the NCAA tournament for the first time in 22 years. You talked about that run that Montana State had 22 years ago. That's why you didn't want to talk to him this morning. I, I That's feel right. Like. I met with him and you were like, no way. I just thought maybe you were busy, but. No, Danny and I have a great, <laughs> great relationship. I tell you, I have so much respect for him. His dad. A high school coach, his dad played football at Washington growing up. Danny wanted to go to University of Washington. Not a nice pass there by Alcibar. And just off the rim. Oh my goodness, that was so incredibly close as he wasn't able to get the finish. McMahon nearly got on the board before the end of the half. And it would sure help the Bears to get a score here just for a little bit of momentum. Connects, comes up empty. And the chants are coming from the Montana State crowd. That was what, as a coach, I used to refer to as a DNDI, did not draw iron, which is not a good thing. Some substitutions here for Montana State as they start to make some exchanges for the final 1.5. Gets into Bishop, he'll let it fly. And that's going to do it for the first half of play. Coach, the Bobcats up by the score of 40 to 28 here at halftime of the Big Sky Conference Championship. Now we head back to the studios for the college basketball halftime report with Zubin Mahente and Sean Farnham. Champ Week presented by Principal. The Big Sky Conference Championship game has one half in the books. We are here tonight in Boise, Idaho. Idaho's Central Arena is the place. And here at the break, as we welcome you back alongside Joe Cravens, I'm Tony Parks. Coach, that first half, Montana State able to find that rhythm on offense, but on the other end, Northern Colorado having some bumpy moments to find their game. Well, Montana State's defense has quite a bit to do with that as well, Tony. They certainly do, and as we take a look at the first half, a lot of players contributing for the Montana State Bobcats. Eight different guys knocking down a bucket. 
Eight guys have scored. The Bobcats are shooting 50% from the field, 50% from the three-point line, and they have held Northern Colorado to less than 30% shooting, Tony. There is a reason they're the conference champs, and they are up 12 points at halftime. A 20% disparity that happens to be there between the two teams in terms of field goal percentage. And you take a look at some of the other numbers, including Montana State getting that production from the second unit. Well, you mentioned it as we came on camera. I thought they really settled into a nice rhythm offensively uh, at half court. I think they're playing with great confidence. I think a lot of that has to do with obviously with them winning 26 games and being the conference champions, but they were in this championship game last year. And I think most of these guys have, or most of their team members have kind of a comfort level. As I said, they settled in real early to a rhythm and it looks like they're cruising right now. But don't forget, Northern Colorado was behind by eight points last night and came storming out of the halftime locker room behind Dalen Koontz's 30-second half points. So hold on, folks. No, both these teams know what it's like to have to rally back. You mentioned Northern Colorado yesterday. Montana State got down 8 nothing in their quarterfinal game, and they were down 11-3 right out the gate against Weber State, trailed by as many as eight in that second half. So a long way to go as you take a look at the Northern Colorado Bears, a team with that explosive offense, and that is what carried the day in that second half yesterday. With Northern Colorado, statistically the best shooting team from three, the best shooting team from inside three in the Big Sky Conference, but Montana State is pretty good at both ends of the court, Tony, not just the offensive end, but the defensive end as well. They have great length and they take pride in their defense. Northern Colorado shot just 29% in the first half and a miss from point blank range and Hume is down and he is hurt. Very typical basketball injury. He came down on, uh, I don't know who was, was that Adamu or Muhammad ankle? And boy, that hurts. That makes my ankle hurt right now. Bodie Hume, one of the all time great players in Northern Colorado basketball history. He's had trouble getting on track tonight, and that is not going to help him. Had a good look there, and he's now 0 of 5 from the game, hoping he can return. Northern Colorado with a number of guys that can explode in an instant. Adama, what a step through, and gets it to go. The biggest lead is now 14. How about that with his offhand? Remember, he came out last night in the second half and took off offensively. Boy, that was a pretty nifty move there. Montana State now shooting 51.6% from the field. Connect is short. That was a good miss by Connect. That was straight as a quarter's worth of rope. It just was short. A loose ball foul here. Northern Colorado starting 0 for 3 here in the second half. Look at this move by Adamu. Left handed, gave you a little hesitation and then a little shooky shooky down low and going to his off hand to bank it in. A kid that went over 1,000 points in the first game in this tournament. He's been around the stump a few times, Danny Sprinkle and the Bobcats. Out of all your phrases, shooky shooky has to be right towards the top. I only added that for you, Tony. I know, I know how much you like that, and when I get confused and don't, don't know what to say, I just throw a shooky shooky out there, <laughs> which is quite often, as you have known. After every game, love to have burgers, fries, and a shooky shooky. <laughs> to go. Yes, second free throw, good from Cookshausen, and this have, they've had their struggles on offense getting to the free throw line is a place that they can be successful and they have 13 free throw attempts so far. Straight man to man by the Bears. I thought they may come out and play a little zone coming out of the locker room, but they have decided to stick with their man to man. Loose ball put back and there is Jabril Bello. Someone's got to get to that big body and keep him off the glass. I'm not sure where John Cooch was at that time. Bella was there all by himself. Northern Colorado now just three of 13 from distance. They have been cold from outside the arc. And during the season, they shot 39.1%. Johnson saves this one, and it goes to Kuntz. 
And the Bears' second leading scorer who just shot there, Matt Johnson, has yet to score a point. Koontz hits this bucket, and could that mean something? There is an offensive foul call, and they are going to uh, count the basket. And we have referred to on numerous occasions already what Coons did coming out of the locker room last night. I was talking about their second leading scorer, Matt Johnson, who has had a terrific season and a terrific February for the Bears. He has scored over 20 in six of his last eight games, and he has yet to tally here in this championship game. Coons with 12 points right now. It was just a night ago that when his team appeared to be in trouble, he came up with the big plays to get control of the game back. Raekwon Battle, the sixth man of the year, a fadeaway is just short. And Battle forced that one a little bit. He tried to fade that screen, didn't get it, and then tried to create off the dribble. There goes Coates, and he's starting to feel it here in the second half. I guess these guys haven't heard me say he likes to go left. Battle. Loose ball, fought for. And the possession arrow will stay with Montana State. And Battle might be in some pain. And watch Koontz here with this crossover and just quick as a hiccup to the basket. He is a great shooter, but he can score, get to the hoop just as well. Conference leading score. I'm not sure what happened to Battle there. Raekwon Battle slow to go to the bench. And Gazela's going to come in for him. Gazela's one of the eight guys for the Bears who scored in that first half with eight points. In fact, he and Patterson, two kind of unlikely sources, led the uh, Bobcats in scoring with eight apiece. Bello may have fallen on Battle's leg on that play. Adamu slicing through. How good is Adamu playing right now? Last night, 16 and a whole bunch of, there's Maddie Johnson. John Cooch, the putback, he has eight. Adamu now has 11. The lead still staying at 10. Every time Northern Colorado right. seems to make a push, Montana State has been able to keep him at an arm's length. Well, watching Montana State, you could say they're playing without a lot of emotion, but they are playing with a lot of confidence and a very businessman-like approach to things. They just keep kind of guarding, shooting it in. Adama with 13, and he has found a nice rhythm here. He has been awfully good in this tournament. We talked about how well Koontz exploded yesterday. Adamu exploded in the second half and the comeback win for Montana State over Weber State. Adamu was third team all Big Sky Conference last year. Honorable mention this year. So again, he has a lot of Big Sky experience. Another offensive foul called on the Bears. And this, this is not Cookshausen's game trying to create off the dribble. He is a catch and shoot guy. If you give him a, a wide open lane to the basket, he can get there, but he has gotten almost no clean looks from three yet here tonight. Bello to Adamo. Got to guard him tight with the way he's playing right now. Watch John Cooch with that great lateral quickness at 6'9". In the corner, Patterson again! Three three-pointers for Patterson. And you notice the way he spaced up to create an uncontested passing lane there for Bishop and to make it easier to draw and kick that ball. Bodie Hume, who left with a sprained ankle, looks like he's okay now. A turnover by Northern Colorado. The Bobcats of Montana State. Keep responding every time Northern Colorado punches, they punch back harder. The Bobcats up 15. This St. Patrick's Day, may I offer a rich and smooth way to make all the motor holidays green with envy. <laughs> rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. When you decided to order a deluxe crispy chicken sandwich instead of a regular one, what you really decided is that you deserve a little something extra today. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.
We have you covered on Selection Sunday. Bracketology starts us off at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on ESPN with Reese and the guys breaking down the NCAA men's field of 68 as the brackets are announced. Then on ESPN and ESPN2, it's our March Madness Women's Selection Show as we reveal the 68 teams and look at every team and matchup in each region with continuing coverage on ESPN2. And on top of that, at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, even more coverage of both brackets as always, you can watch everything streaming live on the ESPN app. And one of the exciting names to come up will be Montana State for that. And Montana State's been great today. Adamo doing everything, drawing, drawing charges, doing a great job on the inside and his range as well. Boy, three for three this second half, Tony. Amen Adamu, 6-4 with arms like well ropes. Can take it in deep and go over you. One of three Englishmen on this Montana State team. He's really got it going this half. Montana State shooting 54% from three. Patterson, a big reason why, just short. What a nice, nice press attack there by the Bobcats. Got it in, got it right to the point guard in the middle of the court. Just not able to come away with the basket. Johnson coming inside, just misses, and foul is called on Montana State. They have just missed on a number of those driving layups. Instead, this foul is on Northern Colorado. Matt Johnson now 0 for 6, one of the best point guards in the league. Their second leading scorer has Tough yet to turnover. get a field goal. Cody Hume, who's back in the game, lost the handle on that one, but will go to the free throw line. Matt Johnson 0 for 5 from the field. Bodie Hume 0 for 5 from the field. Hume has a couple uh, free throws to have two points, but the Bears having a real hard time getting things going offensively. And once again, I think the Montana State Bobcats have an awful lot to do with that. One thing Northern Colorado has been able to do, get to the free throw line. This will be free throws number 14 and 15. But they are 3 of 13 from beyond the arc and shooting just 31.4% from the field tonight. The defense of Montana State has been incredible. And obviously, they've been very efficient on offense, too. And the lead is now at 13 after both makes from Bodie Hume. Well, Montana State has been good at both ends, but what they've done, they have controlled the tempo, Tony, here. I, it just seems like they have got their finger on the pulse of the game, and they are not let up, are not letting up as of yet. Bishop, nice take, couldn't get the finish. And the foul on the rebound is gonna be against Northern Colorado. And for the Bears, I believe that is their fourth, it is. One of the liabilities, and he doesn't have many, that Xavier Bishop has. When he comes off that high ball screen and a big comes out with high hands at Bishop's size, he sure has trouble then delivering the ball to the roll guy down the middle. But as you saw there, he can also hurt you by getting it down right to the basket. Bishop able to get downhill towards the rim, but unable to finish it. When the close comes from Northern Colorado, Kuntz finds a mid-range jumper, it's no good. And the rebound grabbed by Patterson. And the struggles continue when it comes to shooting from the field for Northern Colorado. David Kuntz, four of nine. He does lead his team with 14 points. That has a lot, uh, a lot in case by his five of six free throws. And Adamu is just showing off this second half. The 1,000-point scorer for the Bobcats. Seems like he's just been waiting for this conference tournament to showcase his skills. Cookshausen tries to answer. Osabor deflects. And the foul now is going to be called on Montana State. Great effort by Osabor to alter on that, but here's Adamu with the three. Adamu's the third leading scorer on this team. He is a very good three-point shooter at 39%. Showed great footwork there, and I really like the way Tyler Patterson caught that ball, no hesitation at all, got it reversed. And Damu rhythmed right into that three. Damu was 16 right now to lead all scores. Johnson to the paint, but harassed. The pass goes outside to Kuntz. 
Kuntz driving right of the lane, floats with the left hand. It's no good. You told them to make him drive right, yeah, and they did. I'm, I'm telling you, he, I mean, he's an awful good player, unanimous all first team, all big sky, the leading scorer in the league, but he is much more effective going left than he is right. A takeaway, Cookshausen unable to get it. Great transition defense by Patterson. Patterson. Bishop to the corner for Gazalis. It's long, but a foul is called on the shot. It's on Kuntz. It'll be three free throws for Nick Gazalis, the guy that shot 86.1% from the stripe during conference play. And I think that is Dalen Kuntz's third foul, which is not going to help the Bears cause any. Tyler Patterson, great transition defense, as you said, Tony, using that length, 6'8", and those long arms after Cookshausen stole the ball and knowing uh, that he had that length, he didn't have to foul, just made Cookshausen try to score over him. Salas hits on this free throw. We talked about he had 19 points against Northern Colorado. It was a career high back on March 5th. And so did Osibor. Those guys who conventionally come off the bench and give a spark. And to do what they do was huge. Got overshadowed a bit by the long shot by Raekwon Battle. But when it comes to Coach Sprinkle, he's talked a lot. A number of guys out there and everyone buying in to be the best player for their team. And those star role players you talk about have surfaced so much during the tournament. Well, he, he has great role identification on this team. And it's one thing to have identification. The other thing you got to have is acceptance. And his, his guys coming off the bench have accepted that role. and. Boy, not only accepted it, but embraced it. It is a 19-point lead, the biggest of the game so far for the Bobcats. Melvin throws outside for Kuntz. Kalen Kuntz with three fouls, drives into the lane, crashes into Osibor. And the foul is going to be called against Osibor. Dalen Kuntz's performance last night was just amazing. He was completely out of sorts against that Portland State pressure in the first half. He not only did he only have six points, he had four turnovers, and I thought he had just about thrown the towel in until he came out, hit his first four three-point shot attempt last night and had 30 points for the half and had one of the greatest scoring halves I think I've ever seen. We were wondering what was going to win out so far in this game. The number one offense, Northern Colorado, the number two defense, the defensive efficiency in Montana State. The answer so far has been Montana State. They have held the Bears to shooting just 28% from the field. The Bears have been able to get to the free throw line, but have struggled everywhere else on the offensive end. But Montana State has done a great job of handling this full court pressure here. That was a nice job of inbounding it to the very long Tyler Patterson, who then got it to the point guard. Gazalis, what a take. Gazalis is showing a little attitude, too. Not only is he scoring it, he's got to make it a point of about coming off the bench and scoring it. Johnson comes up empty here. It's a 3 of 14 performance so far for the Bears from outside. And Maddie and Johnson, Johnson is now 0 of 7 from the field. Having a Bodie hard Hume time. is having a tough time. He's 0 of 5 from the field. The Bobcats have done a tremendous job against a lot of the great players. Ali Oop is disconnected, but a foul is called as Muhammad was on his way up. Brother Adamu. Watch Nick Gazalis here, mostly known as a three point shooter. Taking this one to the rack. Great concentration, head up on the rim all the way till he hit the ground. That's what all great finishers do. Don't put your chin on your chest. Keep that head up. And Gonzalez, like I said, mostly known as a shooter, made that one go down in a crowd. 15 bench points for Montana State tonight. Osabor, Montana State leads by 21. And this is a real Achilles heel for the Bears with John Cooch out of the game. Bodie Hume has to play post defense and while he's 6'8 with long arm, he's a little light in the britches to be guarding the big fella like Greg Osselbar. Kuntz driving on Adamu. Doesn't get the layup, but does draw the foul. He'll go back to the free throw line. 
And it's been a great run for Montana State, 10 to two, as they continue to extend past Northern Colorado. This St. Patrick's Day, may I offer a rich and smooth way to make all the motor holidays green with envy. <laughs> rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. When you decided to order a deluxe crispy chicken sandwich instead of a regular one, what you really decided is that you deserve a little something extra today. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. As we bring you back to the Big Sky Conference Championship game back in November, Fran Fraschilla met with Montana State, talked to them a lot about their journey as they try to make the NCAA tournament and win the Big Sky. Said, guys, think about chicken wings. Chicken wings is what you want because that's what everybody orders on Selection Sunday when they see the names pop up. So when things get hard and things get challenging, smell the, checking, uh, the chicken wings, and they are smelling them right now, Coach. That's a great story, but even greater than the story is that picture because because we have finally found someone Xavier Bishop can post up, and it's Fran <laughs> Fraschello, my good friend. And I sure hope Fran Fraschello hears that. You can post me up, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Fran sent Coach Sprinkle a text after the Raekwon battle 35-footer that closed the door on winning the regular season title, and they already had it wrapped up. And the text said, great job with this first part of the goal, but don't forget, chicken wings are not for the NIT. <laughs> you gotta win the whole thing. Koontz hits both free throws. Boy, talk about a hard time putting points on the board for the Bears. Their second and third leading scorer, Johnson and Hume, Tony, are 0 for 12 here after 30 minutes almost in this game. There's a three by Johnson. He knocks it down. First Johnson goal. with that three-pointer. That's the first field goal in about five and a half minutes here for Northern Colorado. As they try to storm back. They're down by 16. And they hadn't hit a three since Mopey Dick was a mentor either. They had, they had a couple in the first half, but it has been forever since they made a long one. Four of 15 for the game, one of four in the half. Osamor! Foul as he skies in. What a nice pass. And that wasn't really a interception as just Tyler Patterson couldn't hold on to that and found Maddie Johnson on the perimeter. His teammates call him Maddie Ice because he's hit so many clutch shots this year. One of the top assist guys, one of the top assist to turnover ratio guys, and third in the big sky in field goal percentage, which is very unusual for a point guard, but he has had trouble connecting today. He was 0 for 7 before that three-pointer. So the Bears were the best team at shooting threes and making threes in the Big Sky Conference, shooting just 26% here so far tonight. They're gonna need a barrage of them here the rest of the way to be able to come back against this great Montana State team. Interesting defensive matchups here. Now they've got now they've got Patterson on Cookshausen and Bishop back on Maddie Johnson there for a while. Patterson was on Johnson. I thought, well, that's going to be a real interesting matchup. Bodie Hume wow. the fadeaway. Doesn't hit anything. Matt Johnson trapped in the restricted area. His hand was on the end line. It's a turnover, and Montana State will take over. You can see the Bears' frustration and Maddie Johnson frustration very plainly. And Montana State, not that team that's ever going to try to back their way into this thing. Good decision, really nice press attack. They've done a nice job of handling this pressure and it really helps to have Tyler Patterson at his size get that first or second pass in your press attack because he can throw over the defense at 6'8 and long arm. Bishop with the floater gets that bounce with his offhand. I bet he has, doesn't lose many horse games. I'm telling you, now, he is left-handed, but that was not an easy shot. That was about a seven-foot floater with his offhand. Hume misses on that one. He's now 0 for 7. 
This is a tough matchup again. Hume at 6'8 with long arms, but he gives up a whole Jump lot stop, of Jump stop, Bishop, wow. and the foul. Just spectacular. And now the fans from Montana State rising to their feet as the lead is now at 21. Watch these two great finishes by Bishop here. This one, a runner with his off hand and it splashes in. And this one, I think he's just trying to see how difficult a shot he can make. An unbelievable finisher for a guy 5'8". He plays that spin off the bank board. Like I said, I bet he hadn't lost many games of horse in his career. Coach Sprinkle had to tell him when he first got there, you have to learn how to see the floor better and be a better passer. He actually had practices where he wouldn't allow him to shoot. It was a frustrating thing for him. They had some heated conversations. And Xavier Bishop said, hey, he gives it to me straight, and that's the way I like it. He's my best friend, he's my brother, but he's also as honest as anybody can be. And that's what you want. The head coach, Johnson, driving hard right side. Can't get it. John Cooch tries for the rebound. Patterson has the loose ball. Well, Tony, both these coaches, Steve Smiley, and Danny Sprinkle have great relationships and great rapports with their team. Not to say they're their best buddy, but boy, they, they really respect them. I've watched both these guys run practice. When they talk, their team listens. So great to have leadership and guys who are so coachable. Osabor takes the bump and draws the charge. All the winning plays, and some of them don't show up in a box score. But they're willing to take charges, diving on loose balls. Such a great team. And they represent the definition of team. And that's about all you got to do in a press attack is just get it back to Mighty Might here. Every time I see him play, I think of that old saying about dynamite coming in small packages. And this kid is dynamite. First team, all Big Sky Conference. Could have very well been the MVP. Bishop, another one. Speaking of MVP, they're going to be giving out that MVP award for the tournament, and that might be the guy right there, all 5'8 of them. Bishop gives his team a 24-point lead. Another close miss for Northern Colorado. It's hard to believe that in the season series, both games have been decided by two points, one on a 40-footer and one in overtime. And right now, Montana State just putting on a clinic at both ends. Pass underneath. Osibor has it taken away as it was stripped away and knocked out of bounds. That will take us to the next timeout. But Montana State flexing their muscles, an 8-0 run. Xavier Bishop tearing it up from inside, from outside, and everywhere. This St. Patrick's Day, may I offer a rich and smooth way to make all the motor holidays green with envy. <laughs> rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Arby's, two for six bucks, every day. Arby's classic roast beef, adored by billions. Two of those things for just six bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. Champ Week wraps up tomorrow with two championship games. You see it there with the SEC and then the Air Force Reserve American championship game. And Xavier Bishop is fun to watch, and these fans have been entertained, to say the least. And this tear he's been on recently has been fantastic. First team all-conference, the smallest point guard in the league, has 14 points. He's 5 of 14 to go along with seven assists, and he looks like he's having more fun than getting ready. He just likes to play the game, and he can get it done. Over 1,800 points in his college career. Three on the way from Connect is no good. John Cooch with the board. He draws the foul. This will be the sixth against Montana State. And it's been that kind of night for the Bears. They've had some open looks and can't get them to go. 
as well as the possessions when Montana State has been all over. Tony, how about this? The team that leads the league in field goal percentage, three point percentage, the Bears for the game are shooting 26% for from inside the arc and 26% for a 15 from outside the arc. And while we have thought been showcasing individual Bobcats offense, their defense has been lights out. See a number of people take charges. Doing a great job helping out airmail on this throw from Bishop. And he has that look towards Patterson the way a quarterback would look at a receiver that may have wrong the, uh, run the wrong route. Well, that wasn't a very good pass. But Bishop, <laughs> I, I think he was telling Patterson, stay where you're at. But I used to tell my point guards on any incomplete pass, you just say my fault, and we'll stay one big happy family and keep moving on. We've talked about champ week here on ESPN. Bellow underneath these fouled by Kuntz. And I but champ week has it's been the case for the Montana State Bobcats. The women's team took the title yesterday. Their men's team on the brink of taking the title here tonight. Their football team, what an unbelievable year for them as they played in the FCS National Championship game. Good things happening in Bozeman. Well, along those lines, Tony, how good and how smooth has this Big Sky tournament been? You and I have Remarkable. been here all week. This is what, our 11th game in uh, four days. I, it seems like it's about our 32nd, but how about how smooth this tournament has gone? John Casper, the associate commissioner of the Big Sky, and the, the uh, tournament director. This thing has been completely seamless. I'm telling you, he's done a great job. Great job, John Casper, our buddy from the Big Sky Conference. Well-oiled machine. They've been tremendous. Cookshausen. No good on this one. It's been that kind of night for the Bears. Bodie Hume hits it, and that ties him for the most three-point makes in Northern Colorado history. He's had a hard time tonight. Last year in the first game of the Big Sky Tournament that they played, he hit six straight three-point shots, and I mean he hit them with guys hanging all over him. Ended up going seven for 10 with 30 points. Patterson turns it over here. He had a hard time there getting rid of it and hanging on to it at the same time. That's one of those you want to tell him stick a fork in that. <laughs> Dan Sprinkle didn't want us to tell him to stick a fork in and he wanted to tell him come on over here and set by me. Put his man Adamu in. Patterson has had an outstanding game though. Three for four from the three point line and 11 points. Oh, to Hume blocks. What a great defensive play by Muhammad. Gazelis to the middle for Adamu. What a great cut by Adamu to get to that shot. That kid's got a great feel for the game, a great feel for finding a seam in the defense. And that's a nice finish by Connect, who had 17 last night off the bench. And for Connect now, he has seven. And they're down by 20. How about that showing some experience and maturity in Mohammed pulling that ball out and saying, let's run the little clock. Adamu fires it, it's off. The loose ball rebound is going to be grabbed by Bello. And if it's in the air, it feels like he's going to come down. I tell you, Bello. He's just so tough in the paint. Well, he, he has developed so much as an athlete. I talked about seeing him for the first time three years ago where they played at Utah State, who was ranked 17th in the nation, and they came just a whisker from beating Utah State then. This was a big old body kid. He has done a lot, a lot of work on his body. He's got great feet. He's got hands as soft as a baby in the line. And that's the reason he is the MVP of the league. Congratulations, Bodie Hume, with that three-point bucket. He now has hit more three-pointers than any player in Northern Colorado history. And I think he just moved from sixth to fifth on their all-time scoring. Yes, he did. 
He's had a great career here. Former freshman of the year. He's been all conference a couple years before this. He's been everything that's good about college athletics. Montana State up by 17 in the Big Sky title game. They say we Irish are a lucky folk. But this St. Patrick's Day, may I remind you, that good taste doesn't come from luck. It comes from the oldest licensed whiskey distillery in the world. Rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. A practice spicy crispy chicken sandwich eater knows. Keep one hand on the sandwich and one hand on the drink. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Some tough moments tonight for Northern Colorado, and it took a minute for Bodie Hume to get going, but he did find his stride here recently. Well, Bodie Hume has just had a terrific career. That made him the all-time leading three-point shooter in the history of Northern Colorado basketball. He was moved up a notch in this game from sixth to fifth as their all-time leading scorer. As I said, he has just had a fabulous career for the Bears. Started 0 for 7, he's 2 of 3 cents. But the hole was dug very, very deep tonight for Northern Colorado as Montana State just keeps coming. Con John Cooch with that nice block. Coming up the court is Connect, he's going to be fouled. And he'll go to the free throw line for 1 and 1. It's an 8-0 run at this point over the last couple of minutes. Bishop May just got little bit loose with that one and John Cooch who is the fourth leading rebounder one of the top shot blockers in the league was going to have none of that the long arm of the law chased him down there. It's tough to get a shot over him. He is outstanding in his timing as well. He throws good by Dalton connect. He's one of three guys. They actually have four guys in this team who played over a hundred college games three of them together. John Coots, uh, Bodie Hume, and Matt Johnson, all for the Bears. They have great team chemistry, and they've had great success since those three have been together. And there's a chance there for a moment with that offensive rebound, but it goes out of bounds to Montana State. Osibor will come back in, and Bella will sit down. He's been nursing that knee a little bit, Coach, but still able to give some production out there. As I said earlier in the broadcast, the last week of the season, because of a rescheduled uh, COVID game, Montana State played Harrison. four games in a week. Another one. He has been tremendous in this championship game. Four of five now from the three-point line, 14 points. He's 17 now. And four of five from beyond the arc, like you mentioned. This is incredible. The, the lead was at 25. A little while ago, they got it down to 16. Now here in this moment, it's back up to 19. What a timely three. Really hampering the chances for Northern Colorado to try and make a comeback. Well, what a nice time for him to regain his touch. Tyler Patterson, we talked about. He has struggled here in the last few weeks, but, but he has found his touch here in this championship game. 19 point lead for Montana State here in the Big Sky Championship game at Idaho Central Arena. This St. Patrick's Day, may I offer a rich and smooth way to make all the motor holidays green with envy. <laughs> rich and smooth, proper number 12, Irish whiskey. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Arby's, two for six bucks every day. Crispy fish with that spicy kick. Two of those things for just six bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal, helping you plan, protect, invest, and retire. 19 point lead for the Bobcats. Montana State here tonight as they have led the entire way and Patterson a big boost from the outside. And like I said, what a great time to find his touch. Six points in the opening game here of the Big Sky Conference Tournament. 
fails to score last night, Tony. He has 14 tonight on five of six shooting, four of five from the three-point line. What a great time to find your touch in the championship game of the Big Sky Conference tournament. This is the ninth time Montana State has hit 10 or more three-pointers in a game. Patterson, the big weapon here this evening. With this team, you just never knew who it was going to be. And it would be somebody different anytime. And that is what helps you when you have that kind of depth. And especially when they got behind in both of those previous games in this tournament. Well, there was a flagrant one that was called. Who was that on? Right uh, before when Greg Nixon came over. To the and, uh, I, I wasn't able to hear what he was saying. Connect at the free throw line. It is now four of five. For connect that make. We'll give him 10. 17 last night to lead his team off the bench. Well, he's just scoring. been such a character based kid. Comes in. First team JC All American. You know, you've coached a number of junior college kids, helping them transition. And he did so incredibly well. Here's Kuhn skying in. The lead is down to 15. Bayless looked like he had concrete overshoes on then. He just blew by him. Zalus thrown across the court to Bishop. Bishop is going to be double bumped. We'll get it to Gazalus. Gazalus is stripped but foul. So the double bonus, Montana State will go to the line to shoot two. And Montana State needs to milk the clock a little bit. Uh, they don't have to worry. Sometimes you start milking that clock, you get too conservative and leave the door open for a comeback. But that's going to be a long way to come back for the Bears. The Bears are sh shooting almost from the get go under 30 percent. Coming out of that timeout, they were shooting 29 percent from the field and 29 percent from the three point line. Tony, this is the team that led the league in both field goal percentage and three point percentage. And just a rough night. The defense of Montana State has prevailed this evening. They started with great tenacity early and just kept turning up the heat as the game was moving on. They've led by as many as 25. They lead by 16 now. Good defense by Muhammad there using his length. Koontz can't score it over him. Really good defense by Muhammad. Like I said, one of those star role players that every really good team has to have. Cookshausen called for the foul against Bush, uh, Bishop. And Cookshausen staring down the official here in this moment. I don't think the official liked that too much. Well, that usually doesn't work out very good to stare down an official. They kind of, it's kind of like being married. They get the final say so, you know. I don't know if you've noticed that or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm over. Well, I'm willing to admit as, I have, yeah. as I have discovered in marriage, she gets a vote, you get a vote, but she gets the tie-breaking vote. I don't know yes. where it's printed in your marriage license that, and that's kind of like dealing with an official. They kind of get the tie-breaking vote <laughs> on all that. I'd like to to feel like all of them have been one-to-one -one even, and it just, you know, that I keep losing on the tiebreaker. My guess is if I were to look at the official stats, it wouldn't reveal that. Well, I learned a long time ago, you don't win many arguments at home, and I never won an argument with an official. Reminder, if you're looking for the WAC championship game, that will start on ESPN News from the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. And what a defensive play by Abdul Muhammad. The back defense, back. the tenacity, the mindset back of this Montana back. State team. Montana State in no hurry here. Up by 18 points with 320 left to play. Timeout called by Montana State. And that is the second time Bishop has hit the deck on uh, against that press. Had the presence of mind to call a timeout there where they still have two left. Obviously up by almost 20. They probably won't use those timeouts. Coach Danny Sprinkle, as you know, is part of this Montana State program as a player. Freshman of the year scored 30 in the championship game. 
But before all or after all of that, when he was kind of trying to decide what he was going to do after he was done playing, he was injured one of the following years. And after he got injured, he was having a tough time dealing with not playing, trying to overcome the injury. Confidence dipped down a little bit. And his dad sent him a letter in the mail. He used to do that. Sent him a letter in the mail, and it listed out all the things he didn't know that so many of his family members have been through, have overcome, and that it made his life much easier and gave him great opportunity. And from that moment on, he really wanted to do what it takes to help other people achieve their dreams. And he said, I want my team to know what it's like to get a police escort to the game. I want to know what it's like. I want my team to know what it's like to walk that blue carpet, play in a neutral site, and have the excitement of the NCAA tournament. And that's been his dream since he started there. And he's 3.05 away from experiencing it. He's done that in a pretty short period of time. This is only his third year of being at Montana State. He got to 50 wins before his third year was over, and that has never happened at Montana State. More spectacular defense from the Bobcats. Bishop with all of the moves. Gazelis splits defenders to throw it back out and run out more time. Whatever was needed, they had the answer for just about all the 40 minutes here tonight. Bishop way outside, fouled on the three, and he'll go to the line. And that is Dalen Coots. Fifth foul. The leading scorer of the league. First team all league, Dalen Koontz will exit the game with 228 and pretty much end his Bears career. Well, I thought that was his fifth foul. I'm here giving that long. It is, it is, it is. Greg Nixon <laughs> escort. I thought, well, I'm giving that long uh, explanation, and, uh, and he's still out on the court. What a great year he's had, though. What a great year all of them have had. What a great run for Northern Colorado. And bright days ahead for this program. Steve Smiley has just been tremendous. A Colorado guy who wants to recruit the state and said, we have all the players we're going to need right here in our backyard. We have to win in this area of recruiting. They've emphasized it. You know, these two coaches have a connection. Both of them come from coaching families. Danny Sprinkle's dad played football at Washington and was a high school football coach. Coach Miley's dad, a long time high school basketball coach. So when you grow up in that type of household, it's a pretty easy transition for you to make that your profession as well. Xavier Bishop has been tremendous tonight. So many different players contributing. And Bishop has 19 points, seven of eight from the free throw line. A loose ball foul called on Osibor. Osibor went up with one arm and had John Cooch around the shoulder with another arm, and he can't understand how he got a foul called on him. <laughs> of course, being a freshman, he'll learn that uh, you can't get away with that for many times. Did you talk about? Coach Danny Sprinkle and the coaches who take so much pride in helping their players achieve great things. How much pride did you take in that to help each individual achieve their dreams? And then the collective unit as you led a team undefeated in Big Sky Conference play and sent a team to the NCAA tournament. Well, I think that's why most guys get into coaching for all the right reasons. All those things that you have mentioned. If you don't get into coaching for those reasons, then you're, you shouldn't be in coaching. And this will be a proud moment for him in this program. On the other side, Steve Smiley will continue to go back to work. They won nine of their last 12 coming into this. And just continue to evolve and evolve and build that culture the way they want it. Reminder for those of you with us right now, the WAC Championship is over on ESPN News. You can check over to ESPN News for the WAC Championship as we finish up the Big Sky Conference Championship right here on ESPNU. A steal by Abdul Muhammad. They'll slow it back down to run the time. Boy, and he's played good today, too. I, I keep saying he does the things that no one really notices. He's a, a, a great defender. He has great experience. He's a great teammate. He is 
You've heard me use this term many, many times this week. He is one of those star role players that every good team has. He could be a guy that could demand more three-point attempts. He was a 45% three-point shooter and didn't necessarily get all of those looks. There's so many different guys who have chances to shoot the ball who have those offensive skills. Well, he second Everybody on, gave something up on exactly this team. That's exactly right. Yeah. He's second on the team in rebounds, second in steals, first in three-point percentage. As you said, at 45%, he doesn't hunt them. Uh, Three-point shots I'm talking about. He lets them come to him. But, boy, what a great key uh, and a spearhead to their defense he is. And you would look at the box score, and it would say he has three points. But you would know he had a bigger impact on the game if you sat courtside. His defensive intensity, his unselfishness on offense. Well, he can guard about every position. John Cooch, a nice putback dunk. Poor John Cooch showing who's the tallest hog in the trough this last two minutes. He <laughs> has had a great career as well. One of my favorite players in the league is John Cooch. Muhammad underneath. Osibor, he's fouled. Take a look at that dunk by Cor Jean Cooch. He's not going to miss many of these at 6'9 with those arms from here to Hoboken, boy. And again, he is one of three guys who played over 100 games in his career all together. He, Hume, and Johnson. It'll be a sad, sad day when their career ends. Hopefully, they'll be able to get to one of those uh, postseason tournaments with 20 wins. I think they'll be a great candidate. But this team, you can tell how they feel about one another. Oh, there's no doubt. Look at this with John Cooch. And you've been a part of these moments, too, where the dream comes to an end, shorter than expected. You know, hard. long days hard. and the yep. long nights, the practices, all the stuff behind the scenes that nobody had a chance to see the growth. You know what? A lot of players have come to me after their career and said, Tony, when my career ended, I didn't know what to do with myself at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> their whole life, they've been practicing. You know, and all of a sudden, when their eligibility is done, I've had them say, Coach, I'm, I'm lost in the afternoon. I don't know what to do. Great work by Osibor. He goes to the bench. Montana State fans rising to their feet. Connect with a right-hand jam. They'll continue with the press defensively. It's a 20-point game at this moment. Bishop circling his way out. So shifty. I don't know what seed they'll get in the NCAA, but i tell you what, they'll be a, ta a tough out, whoever they play, because they've got size, they've got experience, they've got a point guard that can play. And if Tyler Patterson can shoot it the way uh, he did tonight, then they can hurt you from the three-point line. The party is on here tonight in Boise. The Montana State fans came in. They were excited about having the number one team from the regular season, the number one seed, the coach of the year. They were excited about the MVP, the sixth man, the defensive player of the year, all the all-conference honors. All of that was nice. But they came here to Boise to see their team head to the field of 68, and that's where they're going to be going as a number of the guys checking out here today after what was not just a terrific effort here tonight, but all season long and in this tournament. And they played Weber State yesterday, Tony, in one of the most competitive, high-level college games at any level in any conference I've ever seen. What a battle that was. They, both these teams have had to scrap and claw through this tournament to get to this championship game. 21-point lead. Connect from deep, it clangs out. And the rebound is grabbed by the Bobcats. This league was deep, coach. So many good teams, top to bottom. There was legitimate parity, and you saw it all season long. And so many people were excited with this tournament to see what would come out of it. But a number of really great coaches, great players, and really great teams who showed that parity as these two teams split their regular season series. You had a number of teams that were seated very high who lost to teams towards the bottom. But at the end, it was the best team, the number one seed here, Montana State, that's going to come out on top.
technical foul drew Kirkshausen and he threw him on that technical. A one technical ejection. That's a real interesting way to end your career for one of the best shooters I have ever seen in Drew Cookshausen. A lot of frustration, I'm sure, spelling out there as he has had a very, very tough night tonight. And the Montana State defense just hounded him all night out around that three-point line. I'm not sure he got a clean look this entire night. And that's a kid who made 199 three-point shots to beat all of NCAA Division I basketball last year. It's very impressive by this Montana State defense. Six of 24 from three is what Northern Colorado shot in this game, Coach. And that is tough to do against a team that shoots 39.1% from deep. And when they catch fire, they're tough to slow down. You were wondering if they were going to break through just like they did yesterday. Yes. Now, after the technical free throws, they'll shoot the free throws from the fouls. Spears standing at the stripe. I'll tell you what a great job this uh, this refereeing crew has done. Greg they Nixon, great. Randy Richardson, who had to leave yesterday's game uh, when he slipped on some water and hurt his knees. Great to see him back out. And Scott Brown, they have been in total control of this game for all 40 minutes. Connect will drive through and score. 24.7 left to play. It's Montana State up by 21. It's February 5th, they went to Weber State, had a dominant win. Started to feel like they were hitting another level. And then they were just gathering steam as they went along. They lost to Montana late in the season. Coach Sprinkle said he was embarrassed by his team's effort and performance. He said it wouldn't happen again, and he was absolutely right. For the first time since 1996, the Montana State Bobcats are going to the NCAA Tournament. Chicken Wings at Selection Sunday. What a great performance by the Bobcats here in this championship game. Tony, I thought they came out early, established themselves with great confidence and a great rhythm at the offensive end and they carried it through for 40 minutes. Just phenomenal. What a great sight to see as the confetti flies around. What a great experience for all of these guys. The coaching staff doing such a great job. And a big tip of the hat for Northern Colorado for their work during the season as well. A great season. Keep it right here. We're gonna send you to Las Vegas for the WAC Championship game with Dave Fleming and Mike O'Donnell. For Joe Cravens and our entire ESPN crew here in Boise, I'm Tony Parks. The final score once again, 87-66, and the winner is Montana State.